April. I'm Patty Moore of Moore Recycling, and I really appreciate all of you coming here today. I am here today to talk about China and plastic recycling in China. I am a big advocate of plastic recycling, and a lot of the scrap that we generate here in the U.S. does end up going to China, and a lot of the plastic scrap especially. And as an advocate of plastic recycling, it was important to me to know that what we're sending over there is being used appropriately. And so I was able to arrange several visits. Uh, I went four times and I had a staff person that went once over the last few years to learn about what's going on in China with our plastics. So I want to tell you what I learned. Basically what I learned was that there are tens of thousands of plastic recyclers in China as opposed to our few hundred here in the U.S. Uh, and they tend to be small, entrepreneurial, often family-owned businesses uh, that use generally homemade equipment and a lot of hand labor. But some of the most sophisticated plastic recycling systems, in fact, the most sophisticated and modern plastic recycling system on the planet today is in China as well as some of the most crude and least technical facilities. So you see the full gamut over there. But most of them are small family-owned businesses. Uh, and one of the things I often hear is that the plastic that we send over to China is just burned for energy. And that doesn't make any sense at all because it costs quite a bit of money to move it over there and to bring it into the mainland and they do recycle it. Just about everything we give them that is plastic scrap does get recycled. So that was very encouraging for me to learn. The other thing I learned is that while historically there hasn't been a lot of control on the plastic recycling system in China, and you may have seen press or uh, press releases or uh, different articles about the problems with plastic recycling in China. Uh, the reality is, is that is by far the minimal amount of what's happening. Most of it is, is good systems. And China is placing regulations and rules on the industry to make sure that this material is being handled properly and to make sure that they are tracking things and systems properly and that it ends up being usable raw material for their many industries in China. So while it's the central government that's making these rules, it's the local government that is enforcing them. And so the enforcement tends to be at times sporadic and uneven. But this, the uh, Chinese Environmental Protection Agency is aware of this issue, and they're getting better and better at enforcing common regulations and rules on the industry. So what's the process for material? Well, most of the material that we ship scrap plastic to China goes through Hong Kong. And when it gets to Hong Kong, the containers are taken off the ship, opened up, and they're inspected by a, a Chinese government official and determined if the material is good enough quality to go on to the mainland China. If it is, then it's transloaded into domestic containers and it's shipped from Hong Kong into the mainland where it gets recycled. One of the myths that I hear often is that the reason that there's so much scrap plastic being recycled in China is that it costs almost nothing to transport it there. Well, it is true that the cost to transport from uh, Los Angeles to Hong Kong is very low because most of the goods are coming the other direction and the shipping lines have empty containers and are willing to sell them very inexpensively from Los Angeles back to Hong Kong. But the cost to take it from, from Hong Kong Harbor into the mainland, including the tariffs and fees on the material, is very expensive. So the actual transportation cost is not really that different than shipping something from LA to New York. So it's not because of the low cost of transportation that this is happening. It's because there's a lot of industry in China that needs this material as a low cost feedstock for consumer goods that they're making in the country. Let me talk about the different types of materials that I saw. 
because basically different materials are recycled in different parts of the country. So let me start with the PET, the polyethylene terephthalate. What that is is the bottles that are for soda and water, those clear and green bottles for the most part. Uh, and what those, those are mostly uh, recycled in the two provinces, north and south of Shanghai. And you might ask why? Well, PET is a polyester. And most of the PET that's recycled in the US as well as in China ends up going into fiber, various types of fiber, spun fiber, woven, polyester, fiber fill. And so it mimics the center of the textile industry, which is Shanghai. So this material ends up going to those two provinces. And because that is a material that's been recycled in China for quite a while, the systems there for recycling it tend to be more sophisticated than the other materials. So what I saw over there was recycling systems that looked very much like what we have here in the US, minus some of the auto sort technology. So what happens to the material? The bales are broken open. It goes into a hot water bath to remove some of the labels and dirt. And then it runs across, across a conveyor belt. And it's hand removed so that the clear PET is all put together, the green is all put together, and any contamination or problem materials are removed. It then gets ground up and washed and sent through a float sink tank. And then the flake is either bagged or it gets extruded into pellet and sold to the fiber industry. I'm going to talk about film recycling. Film is just really that thin plastic like bags and wraps. And a lot of the plastic that is recycled in China is film plastic. That generally is happening in Shandong and Fujian provinces. So let me explain to you what they do with it there. This is a little less sophisticated. Uh, basically, the bales are broken open, and an individual is responsible for going through each, each bale. They go through and they inspect every single piece of plastic. If it's clear plastic, what they do is they actually will cut off any labels or any printing or take out any colored material so that they have a good, clear, clean feedstock. And often that material is clean enough in, that they can take it directly from that state and put it into extruders and then pelletize it and they then sell it to someone who's going to make new film. For the lower value material or the lower dirty or colored material, that goes into different types of products. If it's colored and they can do color sorting, they'll actually use it for that particular color of bags and film. Uh, if it's dirty or grimy uh, or can't be divided by color, then it goes into something like, uh, I was told, fish floats for fish nets. The, the material I was most interested in seeing, though, the one that has some controversy surrounding it, uh, is the mixed resin material. And that's because Really, our systems here in the US to, to recycle that haven't really been well developed. So there was some skepticism on whether or not that material was actually being recycled when it was sent to China. What I learned was that there are three regions of the country that are handling most of that material, Guangdong, Fujian, and Hebei provinces. The driver, the economic driver behind this mixed material is the olefin plastic. The olefin plastic is plastic that floats, the polyethylene and the polypropylene. And there's a variety of products that we have that are made out of those. So the first stop for this material is the polypropylene and the polyethylene recyclers. And they take the bale, once again like the film, and one individual is responsible. The bale is broken apart, and they actually sort that material into up to nine different color categories, putting all of this, the like colors together um, and the like resins. So they may have nine different colors of polypropylene and nine different colors of polyethylene. And then they take it and they will gather enough of a single color, they'll grind it up, they'll put it in a wash tank, and they'll spin dry, and then they have clean flake all of a similar color, and they sometimes will sell that clean flake as flake, or they may extrude it 
and turn it into pellet, which is the standard material that uh, virgin comes, virgin plastic comes in. It's a, a little pellet. And then they sell it to a, a variety of buyers that make it into consumer goods for the domestic market. For the small pieces, because even in China they can't go through every little tiny piece, uh, what they'll do is they'll take all the small bits and they'll actually put them in that float sink tank and the polyolefins will float. And fortunately polypropylene and polyethylene are somewhat compatible. They can be mixed together. And so they'll take this float material and again when they get enough of it, they'll grind it, float it, and the non-olefins will sink and they'll have a mixed color. So that'll go into some sort of dark product that has a wide specification and not too many requirements on it. But again, there's plenty of products like that it can go into. Uh, simple things. Then what you have left is the non-olefin material. And what they'll do is if the facility is, uh, the, the, their buyer for that material is uh, far away, they'll actually bale that material and ship it to someone who will then break it open and, and use it. If it's close by, they'll just send loose truckloads of it to the nearby facility. And they essentially do the same thing with it that the olefin people do. It's just a little bit lower value at this point. Um, what they'll do again is sort it in by resin, by type, by color, and uh, again it goes through the grinding and washing and it goes into a lot of new products. So what are those products? Let's talk about them a, li a little bit. There is a m another common myth that I hear all the time that we ship plastic scrap over to China and they ship it back to us as finished goods. And that's not been my experience. My experience is that they're making their own domestic consumer goods. Uh, and the reason that I, I see that is that when they send us stuff, we put very tight specifications on it. It has to be a certain color, day in, day out. They don't want any variation. But in China, there is a large uh, poor and, and middle class community that is looking for lower cost goods and they don't care so much about the color like we do. Um, so what I'm hearing and seeing is that they're making their own products for their own internal consumption. And what are those? Um, they may be bottles, new bottles, out of old bottles. Uh, the, the film often is turned back into film, so back into bags and wraps and things like that. And in fact, they even use the different colors to color the, the, scrap pla the scrap plastic and the new products because colorant is more expensive than the plastic itself. That's why they do that color sorting. So it may, the polypropylene, the caps and lids and other polypropylene products um, often are turned into uh, woven polypropylene bags that they then put the resin in. You rarely see a very white, white polypropylene woven bag like you do here. In China, they tend to be various colors of gray and green because they're made from recycled. They also uh, make it into the ubiquitous stool. Everywhere in China, every little store I saw sold little stools that they sit on. And I know that they're using recycled when one day I saw a stack of them and the gradient slowly went from green to gray of this stack and that's very typical of a recycled good. Um, so the color was not important to them but the functionality was and they're able to get it at a lower cost because it's made out of scrap. All kinds of different products are made. Um, a colleague of mine uh, from Europe went to a facility where he saw them take vinyl and, and melt it down and apply it to cloth to make new vinyl fabric. Um, and the consumer goods, the electronic consumer goods, are generally made back into new electronic consumer goods. So again, for internal use, uh, not to sell to us. So really, there's a variety of products. There's a lot of industry and production going on in China. And when they can get this lower cost feedstock, they're very happy about it. But it's not without its issues. 